All right, guys, welcome back. Here we go, round two. So, first thing, I'm gonna have you just start rubbing your hands together like so. This is one of my favorite warm ups for Qigong practice. It's also one of my favorite warm ups for I'm on a plane, uh, I'm getting ready to get on a plane. It's meditative. And, you know, you can make this a little more brisk if you wanna warm up or something like that, but you can also just kind of like rub your hands, you're just chilling. But it brings your mind's attention to your hands and what you're doing with rubbing your hands, which may take your attention away from the pain in your back or, you know, maybe you have some anxiety, you're getting on a flight, you're running, you know, running short on time, but then you sit down, it's, you know, the hurry up and wait thing. So you hurry up, you wait, and then you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna sit here and bring my mind back to something mindful. You start rubbing your hands. Now, that would be nice in and of itself, but we're gonna make it better because I recommend you go from rubbing your hands, which are now charged. Go ahead and hold them just like this for a moment. Your hands are charged. Now take your charged hands and place them to that lower belly that I was talking about so that you have some sense of where your navel center is and some of your hands at least are below that navel center. This is your lower dantian. This is that lower elixir field. This is your gut. This is your second brain. Japanese martial arts, it's called the hara. And most people are very disconnected from this area of their body. So I'm going to give you this as a warm up practice and it's harder to do standing. But if any one of you wants healing in your body with any kind of condition you have going on, any situation you have going on, I highly recommend when you wake up in the morning, you spend 15 minutes lying in bed doing this practice right here. 15 minutes every day. Don't miss a day. If you do, just catch up to speed. Because if you hold this area just long enough, I'm going to give you the shortcut version, you're going to change the flow in your kidneys, you're going to change the flow in your breath, you're going to change the flow of the saliva, therefore your digestion, your body is going to enter a greater state of rest and digest. I could go on just from a simple practice like this. The harder version, when you come to Qigong classes, we stand here like this. And when you get better at this, we stand like this for longer periods of time. It will make the whole body strong. But the easier version, and I do it pretty much every day, is to do this in the morning, when you wake up, and I also do this at night before I go to sleep. It then becomes easy for me to squeeze in another 30 minute Qigong practice every day. We're going to come back to this one later. I just wanted to pause and show you that. Go ahead and shake your hands out like this, like they have water on them. These are just some of our warm-up exercises, and then I have uh, six core exercises that I'm going to teach you today uh, to take home with you. Um, so, and later, you'll have this on YouTube too, so you can always go back and watch these warm-up exercises as well. You're going to take your hands and brush them on your pants. If you have anything in your pants, be careful, like don't hit your keys or something, it doesn't feel great. But try and hit your fingers. Mm, let's do that a few times, and I'm going to say this in a moment. I can only juggle so many pieces. Here, imagine you're shaking the cloud cover, the energy, the maybe emotional debris in your energy field. And then here, imagine you're creating dust or you're breaking up that cloud cover. So you're just trying to touch the tips of your fingers and clear that off, okay? And then we're gonna come back up here, we're gonna do the same thing again. Also, when your hands are high up in the air like this, where do you think the blood goes? It goes down, doesn't it? Well, what's below your hands? 
When you put your hands up here in the air, where's the blood go? It goes to your heart. Okay? This is very healing for you. Okay? And the opposite of that would be what? The opposite of that would be another secret I have for you. You want some healing and you don't even like exercise. You're one of those people, I don't even want to walk. I don't even want to like go outside and run or jog. That's okay. I got a shortcut for you and a secret. Go home and stick your legs high up on a wall. And now gravity has taken that blood out of your legs, bringing it back to your lungs so it can be reoxygenated and then giving that back to your heart. So that is a way to cheat, and I highly recommend you do that. It's another one of my favorite practices, especially after coming home and practicing martial arts for several hours in a row. Ah, exhale your breath. We're going to get into this first exercise now on the board. This one is called Gentle Drum. If you've ever seen one of those uh, Chinese drums, usually come from Asia, it swings, it's got little balls on it, it swings around and taps. We're going to swing our body like this and we're going to let our hands kind of just lightly tap on our body wherever your hand kind of lands. But ideally, you want to be somewhere right back here like on the lower back, okay? And so this is going to influence the kidneys amongst other things. It's going to open up your energy overall and it's just nice and light. We're not like warming up necessarily to play golf or something. We're actually just trying to open up the chi. And I am going to make this exercise stand out for you, hopefully in your mind, so you remember later at home that this isn't just I'm warming up to do tennis or I'm warming up to do golf or I'm warming up to do pickleball. I want to show you how this becomes very internal Qigong-esque focused and the first way I'm going to show you this is we're going to do gentle drum for a couple more minutes like this. But then we're going to do something different. We're actually going to do exercise number six which is standing tree meditation because I want to emphasize to you the internal aspect of Qigong straight away today as quickly as I can so to speak. So this is our warm-up, and we're going to use this warm-up of opening up our spine, opening up our energy system, etc. And then we're going to cause the energy to go up through our spine in a moment with standing tree meditation. So nice, light, nice and easy. And you can do this a couple of ways. You can do this with flat feet. If your hips and stuff aren't as mobile, you could just be flat footed. But you can also do this in a little bit more sports functional way, where as I turn my body to my left, my right heel will come up. As I turn my body to my right, my left heel will come up. And I'm pivoting in this fashion. This type of movement would be used in a lot of sports and so on, and it's a little bit more of a functional movement and probably a better warm-up for things like golf and tennis and all those kinds of things too. Baseball. All right, so just keep going with me here a little bit. This is a practice that if you ever watch a documentary on Qigong, related to what's going on in China, which I highly recommend you do, you will see a park filled with people, way more people than we have right here, filled with people, filled. And they're doing like, you'll see this practice, you'll see other practices, but you'll see a lot of this practice right here. Do you know that many of those people who are out there just doing this twisting business, this gentle drum business, do you know that many of them have been diagnosed with terminal cancer four years ago? Four years ago they were diagnosed with terminal cancer and they're out practicing this in the park. My grandfather who lived to be about 81 or something like that, he used to say, I'd say, hey how are you doing today? And he'd say, I'm still fooling them. Meaning I'm fooling the doctors, I'm fooling the grim reaper, I'm still alive, right? So those people who are out in the park four years later after being diagnosed with a terminal disease and they're doing something as simple as this, you got to ask yourself, what's going on there, right? So it's probably something good. So we're going to keep doing this one nice and easy. 
Anywhere you feel like kind of stuck, you feel like, oh, like today I could feel it in my sacrum area. So I want to just kind of like put my mind there and just keep kind of moving that area. And the more that we move, ah, sensed it. I was like, it's about to go down. But then I was like, maybe we'll get lucky. All right. So what we're going to do here in a moment now is we're going to go from this twisting movement business where we've stirred up our blood, we've stirred up our chi, we've stirred up our lymphatic system, and then I'm going to show you, and you just watch me, this will be our first time through, do as best you can with what I'm about to do. I'm going to let my feet come solid to the ground. I'm going to imagine plugging my tailbone into the ground, so I'm, I'm just like sitting on a tall stool. I sit and I plug my tailbone into the ground. I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to bring them just to my side. They're going to help me balance. They're also connecting to the energy field. From that position, my chin is roughly parallel to the floor with a slight tuck downward. My pelvis is slightly tucked forward. I don't want it tucked way forward, but I want to bring it forward so that my tailbone is kind of coming to more of a position where it's almost like straight and I can plug it into the ground. And then I'm going to hold there very still for a moment. I'm going to try my best to relax my body just enough that I can stand here in a relaxed fashion, but have just enough tension in my body that I can stay standing. That's what you're looking to create. Now I want you to go ahead and find your breath. What is it doing? Just notice it. And then just for a moment, I'm gonna have you add one other little detail here before we go back into movement. I want, to, I want you to take your tongue, touch the tip of your tongue right behind your two front teeth. You're connecting some acupuncture channels there. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, and start marching your feet when you're ready, just kind of lightly pounding them on the ground. Go ahead and make some light fists, and go right back here to the sacrum area, and kind of tap this area out. We're just kind of go right here to the lower back, the sacrum, then come out a little bit to your hips. You can kind of use your one knuckle here off of your index finger to kind of get up into some of these acupuncture points. And then if we go open palm, we go down the sides of our legs, come up the inside, go down the outside to wherever is comfortable. Do a little tapping here on the outside of your legs. Until you get tired. My arms are already a little tired. That's good. Relax. Go back to that frame. You're holding like so. Inhale, exhale. We're going to take our hands. This one in our school, we call the waterfall. I call it the waterfall because it's nice to practice in a waterfall or even just imagine water running over the top of your body. If you're going to forget all the Qigong exercises I share with you but you're only going to remember one, this is the one I want you to remember. You know, take the backs of your hands, exhale through your mouth as you sit your weight down. Don't, you don't have to sit too far, just whatever's comfortable, just a little bit of energy toward the ground. Exhale your breath through your mouth, bring your hands up 
inhaling through your nose, slow and easy, not a fast breath. And then when you get to the top, start exhaling your breath as your hands start moving downward. Downward. And you're sinking a little bit. I recommend sinking. And then here, you're coming up. So I'm a little taller here. I'm a little bigger here. And then here, I start becoming a little shorter as I sink toward the ground. Now initially it may be a little much to focus on your breathing and the movement so you can just leave the breath completely alone don't do anything with your breath and just slowly move your hands and try and keep a similar cadence And excellent. And then go ahead and, you know, march your feet just for a moment. This keeps the circulation going. This keeps the blood flowing, etc. Now, this particular exercise, waterfall, when we reach up like this, that's like the heavens, right? So that's another name you'll see for this one sometimes is like, it's called bringing down the heavens. You sometimes will see that name. Important concept, you're pulling in the heavens however you want to think about that, pulling in the sky. But then the second part of the exercise, very important, is putting it in the earth. You want to be grounded here uh, in your life. Qigong can make you very like lightheaded or like a little bit disconnected, which on one hand is a good thing, but on another hand it's not necessarily safe to be walking around in the world. So the waterfall is a very good practice, like let's say you just got out of a meeting or you're going to a meeting or you wake up in the morning and you need to clear something. Watch me do it one time. I reach to the heavens with my breath. I'm going to inhale, but before I do, I exhale through the mouth. <sighs> I inhale. <sighs> That exhale of the mouth, the sinking of the body, very important. That's what gets you grounded. So now you have a lot of energy, but you're grounded. So those two parts of this exercise, that's what you're always playing with. This exercise right here, uh, there are a couple of students, one of them's here now, but there's a couple of students of mine who are also teachers in the school, and they both went into the doctors uh, with high blood pressure. One of the teachers, her, high, her blood pressure was 40 points too high, the doctor said. She, she, she asked the doctor, can I have a few minutes to myself? The doctor left. She practiced this practice, only one she did, this one. She dropped her blood pressure 40 points. She then spent the next 10 minutes teaching the doctor how to do the exercise. So that's another thing. This exercise is the number one prescription that I give for people with high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure though, you want to be very light with the breath, nothing too intense. I'm going to show you just two variations and then we're going to go back and do it again a few times. One variation is just, like I said, you, there's no breath, just leave your breath alone. Then you could have the second variation where it's the clean inhale and an exhale. And then I could do a third version where it's a little more, you can even hear me, it's ah, ah. So you'll see, if you watch me on YouTube and stuff, you'll see these different variations. Each one has its own purpose. So the first one we're going to do together, we're going to do like three or four of them. Don't do anything with your breath, just leave it alone. All right, so here we go. Slow motion, you're reaching to the sky, reaching to the sky, and you're just focusing on the movement. Just do that several times. We might even do it 10 times, we'll see. But slow motion, don't worry about your breath at all. This really emphasizes the internal chi. We'll do it like 10 times.
Now see if you can start adding your breath to it so that as, and it may have already happened for you where it just started to happen naturally, but see if you can add your breath that as your hands start to move up, you inhale through your nose. When your hands are ready to move down, exhale through your mouth. Put your mind and your energy in the ground. Imagine you're putting your mind and your energy in the ground. Hazards of training outside. We're going to do two more like that. I want to do one more. Now this time, if you wanted to purge a little, okay, and I know you all want to purge a little, get rid of some toxicity. If you want to purge your energy field, if you want to cleanse some things from your body, we're going to add a little bit more of a charged breath. Not that that wasn't working, this is just another angle of doing it. We're going to inhale the breath through the nose. Once you bring it through the nose, when you exhale through the mouth, it's, it's like from your gut, you're going ah, as you're sinking to the ground. You start tightening your belly a little bit. It squeezes the organs a little bit. It squeezes out any of that toxicity in your breath and so on. So it goes like this. Exhale your breath first. Ah, inhale coming up. Exhale, come up, inhale, exhale going down, inhale, exhale, Good, and then kind of march your feet like this again. Get a little grounding going on. Go ahead and tap your low back here. Down the legs. Notice with waterfall, we come up this way and we come down this way. The next exercise, we're going to go back around this way because eventually we'll integrate them together. And then the hands start coming here. So I'm going to isolate this for just a moment. Sometimes you'll see us practicing just holding here. Either middle fingers touching or not, just hands hovering here. And this is feeding lower dantian. This is like holding a chi ball. This is practiced quite a bit in arts like Kung Fu and uh, Tai Chi. It's even used in uh, martial arts uh, settings, including the art of Aikido. Mm. Some of you Look at my elbows. Do you see how they're hugged into my body? We want to round them like you're holding a ball. So if I were to bring this up to uh, middle Dantian, which you often see this practice as well, I have this rounded ball. But for right now, we're going to keep it here. This is your rounded ball. This framework rounded elbows and hands sitting like I'm holding this uh, yoga ball 
This will start helping you get in touch with your energy body. Those of you who are feeling that tension in your hips and in your shoulders and so on, that's not just in your body, that's in your energy field. And you're starting to make it move. This right here is charging your lower Dantian, which is your first battery. In this next exercise that I'm going to show you, we're moving through this position, but I want you to know this is there. I don't want you to just skip over it. So, the third exercise, we're taking the hands, we're going this, we just finished a waterfall. Let me, let me show you like this. We just finished a waterfall in the series. You will have just finished a waterfall. The hands will then go back this way. I want you to remember right there, there's your beach ball. But then you're going to interlace your hands. We're bringing the hands straight up the center line. We come up over the face, over the top of the head. The hands will turn over and you're going to, with, don't hurt yourself, but you're going to press your hands toward the sky. This particular exercise is called, often called upholding the sky or uplifting the sky. Right from here, I will release the fingertips your exhale will happen here through the mouth as you sink your body. From here, I want you to just do this for a minute. Like imagine like you're gathering from the ground because that's what you're doing. I don't want you to just skip and go to here and then go to here. You're gathering from the ground, you're pulling, you interlace your fingers, you're still pulling. Pull from the ground, pull from the ground, pull from the ground. Then you come up then you press above your head. You can exhale, start your exhale right here. And then release. Exhale, come down. Inhale, slow. Starting the inhale if you can. That may be too complicated for right now. Breath will be full right here. You can even hold your breath for a second and then exhale your breath. As you sink your body weight, Inhale, exhale, inhale, pulling from the ground, exhale, inhale, press, And in a slightly more advanced practice, you're inhaling here. When you get to here, hold the breath in your lower belly by tightening your belly and then try and hold the breath for a second, two seconds, then exhale your breath. Pull from the ground, inhale. Hold the breath if you want to, two, three, exhale. If it makes you lightheaded at all to hold your breath, you're not ready yet. Just release and exhale if your breath is not ready yet. And also, if you ever hold your breath, and I'm holding my breath up here, I always have to hold with my feet down low, make sure I'm grounded, exhale. Right from here, I want you to go back to a waterfall. Inhale, here's the waterfall, exhale. Now we can use different sounds. I want you to try on this one to use like an ah sound. The doctor, you go to the doctor, the doctor says, say ah. It's an ah sound. That ah, or sort of like a ha, that kind of sound, it releases the chest, it's good for the heart, it kind of calms you. So from here, it's an inhale. This here is ha. Check it out, we're gonna go back this way. Inhale. Exhale. Ha. Inhale. Exhale. And then we can go back to a waterfall. Inhale. Exhale. 
I'm back to an upholding the sky. Exhale. Back to a waterfall. Now notice, and then I'm going to have you do this several times if you want to, is notice that this movement, if you just watch me do it for a minute, there's the waterfall, and then here comes uplifting this, or up, up, uplifting or upholding the sky. I go here. But if you look at this part of the motion, everybody do this with me. It's like bird's wings. Bird's wings. This is a motion you might want to become familiar with. So just this motion here, that's living right in between those two exercises because right from here we can come up and go waterfall. Ah. Right from here we can come under to uplifting the sky. Exhale. Right back to the bird's wings and waterfall. All right, go ahead and start marching your legs. Some of you may not know this. Your calf muscles. Y'all know you got calf muscles, right? But some of you may not know that the calf muscle is considered the gastrocnemius, and the gastrocnemius is considered a second heart. Did you know that? It's a pump. And when you move like this, you cause blood to go back up to your lungs to become reoxygenated. And then, to, and then to your, back to your heart, all right? And yeah, sit down and rest whenever you need to. Qigong is weird. You will feel stiff, you'll feel uncomfortable in moments. You may feel lightheaded. Rest whenever you need to. It's a beautiful day. Sit down, just chill, watch, and then re-engage. But you're stirring up toxicity. And when you march like this, there, as I've been teaching this for years, does this look like anything to you? Well, yeah, it looks like marching. What do soldiers do? They march. Don't they march a lot? Soldiers march a lot. You know one of the reasons that soldiers march? Because if you just had them walking, they would have too much fatigue. And they would quit and they would sit down. So what do they do? They march. And they march typically with some type of their own version of a mantra. Okay? But what this does is it opens up your feet it opens up the meridians in your feet and in your legs, and it gives you energy, starts driving the energy toward the kidneys. I'm gonna give you a bonus practice right here. I kind of showed it to you earlier. We held here, right? So, if your shoulders are challenged, I recommend practicing it lower dantian. The slightly more challenging practice is to practice at the level of the heart. The elbows are hanging though, not like this with my shoulders up. This is hanging. After doing all of what we just did, this exercise, you should feel some internal energy moving up and through you here. Breathe into it. it. May feel a little shaky inside. Right from this position, this position here. Take your right hand and press it toward the sky, and your left hand press it toward the ground. This exercise is called separating heaven and earth. Here, you're pressing up heaven. Here, you're pressing down earth. From that position, try and make your knees slightly bent, your spine slightly straight there, as straight as you can, and then your chin tucked just slightly downward. And now we're going to transition. Bring the elbows in, and then start to bring one hand down and one hand up. Be methodical about it, so to speak. And when you get there, try and drop the shoulders, even though you're holding something up and extending your arm you're pressing apart heaven and earth. Take an inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose or mouth. Make the transition movement. Start moving, 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 moving. Press apart. 
Inhale through your nose. Exhale as you start to press apart. Take an inhale. As you start to exhale, go into this motion and press them apart. This is a medical Qigong practice said to be very good for the uh, spleen and the stomach. Therefore, good for that aspect of digestion and immunity. Inhale, exhale. <sighs> Later, when you get better at this practice, if and when you can, you would try and inhale right here. Slow inhale as you're in motion. And then when you push apart, you would exhale. As you start to go into motion, you would try an inhale right here. And then here, exhale as you press apart. Inhale as you start to go in motion here. Exhale as you push apart. Let's do one more. Inhale. And we're almost done with this first round, or second round, but first round of physical practice. Exhale. You all did great. Now take this hand, drop it, bring this hand up. They're about here from this position. Backs of hands will go down. We're going to inhale, put another waterfall in here. Inhale, exhale. This time, for grounding purposes, I want you to let out a little bit more. It almost sounds like a sumo. It's a little more guttural. So I inhale and then I go, ah. it's a gut sound. And you want to sit your weight down and you want to feel like you're a sumo. Okay? It's the idea of getting grounded, getting heavy, rooting to the earth. Okay? So this is how we're going to do it. Inhale. Ah. And then pause there for a second. Then when you're ready to breathe, come up. Exhale. Ah. Put it in the ground. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Ah. March your feet. You're almost done. Little break. Almost done. Give yourself a little mini round of applause. You made it through. All right. Okay. But I have one last exercise before you go. And this is sometimes, like if you ever come to Qigong class or any class like this, anything that I do, when you get better, when you get better, after you've done all those exercises, we have you stand, in, often, in standing tree meditation. We did it earlier. I gave you one version of it already. But if you're not used to this type of training, after you've done all of that, imagine doing that. We did that for about 35, 37, maybe 40 minutes. All of that, right? Imagine doing all of that, and you kind of know what you're doing, but it's not easy. It's still a little challenging. We do it for 60 minutes. And then at 60 minutes, or say 50 minutes, you stand in standing tree meditation. When your mind is like, oh, class is almost over. Isn't it time to go? I'm going to go home. I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And then the master, like in my case, when I would study with these teachers, it was now time to stand still and let everything go and go into meditation for a period of time. I'm going to challenge, with, challenge you with that just a little bit because we want to learn to control the mind a little bit. We'll take this in a little bit. We'll have a little break and then we're going to come back and we're going to do a, uh, a little bit more extensive training on the standing tree meditation uh, momentarily. But I'm going to just have you do it briefly. So here we go. Go right back. Wherever the feet go, that's where they go. If we're doing this for 10 minutes, you don't move your feet. They don't move. They stay where they are. 
Knees, bend your knees slightly. Go ahead and scratch your face now, go ahead. Because after that, there's no scratching of your face. Your mind's gonna say, my face itches. Unless you have a bee on your face or something, don't scratch your face. Hands go to your side. Close your eyes. Immediately take your attention to your feet. And actually, if you're new, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. If you feel very confident about your balance right now, close your eyes, but otherwise, keep your eyes open. If you're new, it's actually best to keep your eyes open. In an advanced training, we close our eyes because we're more confident in our ability to stay standing. But now, I want you to become physically still and do your best to relax the musculature in your body and see if you can relax it more and more but hold just enough tension in your body to stay standing. Just enough attention in your body and use your hands for some stability. That's what your hands are hanging there to the side for. Use them for stability so that you're not falling over or doing anything too crazy. And notice where your eyes and your gaze are. If your gaze, your internal gaze, is up toward the top of your head, put it down in your feet. I don't want you looking out the top of your head. You'll become very spacey and very lightheaded. Look at your feet with your mind's eye. Look at your feet. And now just become very still as best you can. Stay still, be still. And listen to the trees and the breeze. But stay awake, please. Meditation is not sleep. Meditation is not passing out. Stay still. Excellent job. Go ahead and take three breaths. Inhale, exhale. And just kind of march your legs just to bring some movement back and tap out your lower back area, etc.